One of the things that I heard in each of, in each of the stories that you shared is this idea that representation matters, right? You started to kind of see these, uh, you said there was a B, BSU, ACSU that was here and that kind of pulled you in and helped to, to keep you here. You mentioned thinking about if this was the place for you, seeing these four women, I, and I don't even know if you said they were women of color or not. Yes. Um, who said like, come here, how you doing, right? Mm -hmm. Representation matters, or you, you and I connecting, right, yeah. in, in, in that space. You know, representation matters, because one of the things that I remember is even when I met you, one of the reasons why, like I pulled you in was like, because I saw bits and pieces of myself, like in your experience, like yeah. doubting myself, not knowing if I really fit in, in that space. And so when I got into higher education, I said, I wanted to be the administrator or the professor that I never had. Right. I, I didn't have like a lot of faculty of color, I didn't have administrators, a lot of administrators of color around me during my undergraduate experience. And so those are all examples of how and why, you know, representation in these places matter. Right. Seeing can, yourself. Can I ask a question on that? Mm -hmm. would, would you have been able to connect to Don as well? Uh. Were he not? black and have similar experiences question. to you? Like, yeah, was there something man. about that that yeah. made a special connection to so, you? Yeah, actually I have two points. So probably the person that I've relied on the most in my experience as an undergrad has been my advisor, uh, Professor Veith. And he, uh, and he's a, a white man. Mm. However, like speaking to him, he understood a bunch of the background I was coming in with. So I was very fortunate to have him as an advisor. It's oftentimes hard to run into other folks who are in STEM as well, especially the high, higher up you go. So like, though, I feel like the only way I would have come across Dr. Sawyer was through my involvement in clubs because like my, my coursework, the people that I was interacting with aren't necessarily in the same spaces as Dr. Sawyer on campus. So. But what is it about that connection that's so special? And, and I know? think, um, just the emulation, like wanting to, like, you know, I, I, when, we, when we talk about, especially within like the, the realm of a barbershop, a place like where you traditionally have like older men of color speaking to younger men of color, um, you kind of try to build bits and pieces of like role models. So like, I think having a role model, like I, like even before I met Professor Sawyer, uh, I think the, the first positive like male impact here at Quinnipiac was a, a adjunct professor for English called like he's Professor Thaddeus Martin. He's probably the, one of the uh, first positive like experience I've had in like hi, like higher education. And like he like set the stage for me to want to continue. Because a lot of times I think professors find themselves like it's hard to not like acknowledge the difference between like you know race and all these other different like social factors that take it yeah. take to place. But I think his ability to be just honest and genuine about the situation and want to learn more about me as a person, an individual, and a student showcase to me that you know like racially like you know we, we don't have to necessarily look or be like be the same person or come from the same background i think in the the, uh, the ideas of like identifying who i want to be as a man and who i want to be um you know after i leave this space um you i think there wouldn't be somebody who would directly understand my situation or my life more than somebody who actively has lived a similar life i think you can only go so far uh, when you're talking like across racial boundaries because you might have an idea about my like my reality, but if you're not actively like a part of that reality, you'll never fully understand it. I think one of the mistakes I made coming into here is I looked for that black woman or black figure to clinch on, that comfort. And I didn't necessarily get it. And what I need people to understand and know that you are going to have figures who don't look like you. Mm. And it's okay because you can meet someone like they say, all skin folk ain't kin folk. folk. And that is a common saying that just because someone looks like you, that doesn't mean they have the best interest and best heart mm. for you. It's just like you will come across genuine people in all spaces. Mm. Um, but if you choose to hold yourself back and feel like you have to cling to black people mm. or to white people because you want to be in your comfort zone, you're never going to grow. Mm. I, mean, I think that's why it's important to build a team, 
two of the most influential women in my life, I mean, outside of like my mother and stuff like that, and my grandmother, were two white women. Uh, my undergraduate professor, Dr. Wanda Jagaki, um, short, feisty white woman, and <laughs> my dissertation advisor, Dr. Siri Bicklin, another feisty white woman who, who taught me that like I mattered, mm. that my voice was important, mm. and that I, I didn't have to limit myself. Then I had you know, mentors of color as well, right? And so I think it's mm. important to kind of have a team or a tool belt. Sometimes you need a hammer, sometimes you need a screw, sometimes you need a wrench, right? You need to have different people, mentors, sponsors, um, role models and all of those things. You can learn, I think, um, different things from different people. Yeah, right. I, I, I mean, I've, I've learned many different things from different people and some people who you would say, are younger and less experienced, but have shared something about their lives where you say, hmm, I never understood that. I also think we may have like a shortage of black figures here because Don, your name is mentioned numerous times by, you know, students of color. And it's just like, I always want to ask you, how does that feel? Like you are that, yeah. that prominent figure who so many people rely on. And I'm just like, that's a burden. Like, mm. I, like mm. it's awesome to be in that position, like to, to have that opportunity to bless people and give them that knowledge and, you know, feedback and experience and just to just be there. But I'm, I'm curious to know how it's been for you. Like, is it, is it tough? Like, uh, I'm very curious. So I think back to another transformative person an experience that I had, right? So when, when I first started in higher education in, at Syracuse University, I was in residence life and they were like, we, we're gonna have a division breakfast and the senior vice president of student affairs was gonna address you know, the, the whole division of student affairs. And they said his name was Barry Wells. I didn't know who he was. And so he walks out on stage, Barry Wells, who's the senior vice president of all of student affairs at Syracuse University, and is, the, is this black man. And I was like, yo, I didn't even know that that was possible. And so I was like, I want to meet him. I sent him an email, his assistant an email, and set it up. And when we got in, into that space, one of the first questions he asked, he's like, when are you going to start grad school? Because um, he was like, I'm not going to be here forever. And we need people like you to continue through that, to, to that path. And so he had a group of us that he would meet with, that he would drop these little gems on, right? You know and tell and share his story so we wouldn't have the same obstacles or make all of the same mistakes that he made. Even though there are not many black male administrators here on, on campus, and I know a lot of students look to me for support or faculty and staff look to me for support, but I don't necessarily see it as a burden. I see it as an opportunity to kind of pass on the gems that were given to me, right? Because I wouldn't be here in this position today if it wasn't for people who helped to point me in the right direction. It's my way of, of paying it back. Like that's the way that I stay grounded. That's the thing that, that, that kind of motivates me to continue to do this work. And I understand that it matters. And, and I'm giving you a commitment as somebody who has some influence in this institution to say that we definitely want to reflect a much broader kaleidoscope of society and when we formed our senior management team of the university, we were deliberate about trying to bring in a lot more diversity. I mean, Don is not the only black person on our team. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two members of the LGBT community. We have people of different faiths, men and women. So, and, and we're really trying to influence the perspective that people bring to how they go about hiring, that it isn't a burden on just a few people, that we are much more reflective of the society that we want to be. What has the experience been like for you, like, you know, being like in this leadership role and kind of going through these um, conversations and uh, discussions about kind of like changing hiring practices? And First of all, I, I don't think you can do it unless it's authentic yeah. because people right. see through That's you. Key. I mean, you have too many occasions to express yourself. And if it's not authentic and if you 
don't really believe it, it'll show through. So first of all, you got to ask yourself, what do you believe in? Is this authentic to you? And I learned this, this year even more about just the huge inequities and, and um, inequality and injustices and prejudices and discrimination and suffering of the magnitude that I couldn't imagine. So I want to change things, and I want to change things in a way that are lasting. But I also feel that the people you bring into your leadership roles you want to make sure that they are aligned with your vision so you are not there on your own trying to change the world. That it becomes something that is a shared commitment and passion. And, and so then it builds. <laughs>